That's what I want. By way of introduction, um, last night I was watching, or the night before last, and I was like, yeah, I'm uh, by way of introduction, right before last, I was watching an episode of Monty Python in which aliens invade Earth and change all the British, like all the English people, into Scotsmen so that there are no good tennis players left and the aliens can win Wimbledon. Um, and the aliens are. Is this a dream? Are you talking about No, no, no this, is, this is an actual thing. It happened. Um, and the aliens are this French dessert called a blancmange. And in many ways, this sort of white. Jellyish, uh, inoffensive dessert reminds me of my friend Travis Gray. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the audience. <laughs> Except Travis isn't inoffensive. That's right. No, and, and also, a blancmange is a creature of this earth. And Travis is not. Um, so, like please, to discuss with us, do androids dream of electric dog cocks? <laughs> Travis Gray. <laughs> Thank you for that. And of all the productions I've had, that certainly was the most recent. <laughs> <laughs> I stole that joke too. I sure did. And there's a lot more of them just waiting for Why is everyone music fucking comic sounds? <laughs> Wait, have we done the hat? Yes, it's the world. Yeah, the hat's been distributed. Oh, I didn't uh, Some of you might be familiar with my early work. Uh, I just had a recently published bush out of a book, How to Get Invited to Children's Parties. Well, not on the Amazon chart, you need to use Tor to access the chart it's talking on. Uh, we're just going to jump, today we're discussing like sexual taboo, like where we are right now, maybe where we're going, what's going to be like considered inappropriate in the future, and what people still do anyway. So we're going to start off with this little thing, which uh, is actually from uh, Do Android Stream of Electric Sheep, and it's... The old man said, you'll be required to do wrong no matter where you go. It is the basic condition of life to be required to violate your own identity. At some time, every creature which lives must do so. The idea fair. there is that uh, life is filthy and, uh, and it, it strays towards deviancy. Uh, it, it may be a result of Darwin's theory of natural selection that uh, the mutation might, have, might go a little bit further and unfortunately that uh, it's still reflected in the way we like to live our lives. Uh, so here's a pretty good example. And it's not going to play like Pat told me it would, which is... <laughs> so it's playing now. Button. Yeah, press that play button. So I'm your mom and you're my son and I am falling in love with him. He said, are you really? I said, yes I am. He said, you know what? I was scared to let you know too. I am too. The book is sending adults if, if uh, it comes around to it, you know, it's just like the game. Oh, no! <laughs> We would all agree on. Uh, you know, in this is all rubbish from your fucking shoe. It may be. I hate you. <laughs> There's plenty more of that. Uh, look, I think we can all, you know, uh, incest is pretty across the line. It's considered taboo, but that, that's just a classic and uh, real world example of something that's considered a taboo right now. So I'm your mom. And your <laughs> okay, so we've got a list of taboos there. Some of them look pretty good. Uh, and, for some things, it's just a regular Saturday night. Some of these are cultural hang-ups. So some of the things that we consider as taboo right now... Is this like now, your mother eating a tampon? I don't, I don't know that that, that... that probably would be considered a taboo, but more in regards to health. Because there is uh, there are issues with the Labour Party not paying for tampons anymore. Uh, that's exactly what I'm saying. Well, Jay, that's, that's, that's the only other thing that's no longer paying for tampons. that we're not paying for... Uh, but for the record, I, I do think women's sanitary napkins should be available free in, in all public bathrooms. Yeah! Yes! Don't wait! Travis is not a feminist hero! Why does he say that extremely clear? Not yet. Also, he's just right tax to pay for us. There is a tax tampon issue, right? What is called that? A tax tampon There is, there is, there is, there is. Your passion for blood play, as it's called on the more <laughs> deviant part of the internet, is well regarded. I'll send you some links later. <laughs> uh, thankfully, Marvel is still alive. <coughs> She's uh, a worthy. Some of these taboos exist 
for cultural reasons, and so we've already dropped a lot of them in the West. Uh, some exist for very good reasons. Uh, and bisexuality. <laughs> well, bisexuality, <laughs> Sydney would no longer consider the various forms of queer sexual expression a taboo in the West, most people. But some of them definitely still exist. So, for example, it's quite fine to lick someone's foot and get off on that. It's quite different to cut someone's foot off <laughs> and get off on that. <laughs> uh, what we're really seeing is a <laughs> So a lot of taboos are breaking down. Uh, you know, fetish is it's accepted. It's pretty well regarded in the West in a lot of places. Uh, you only need to look at shit things like uh, Fifty Shades of Grey's popularity to realise that there is definitely a hunger out yes. there for stuff that's a bit different. When you said shit things, I was not expecting you to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting a joke. Shit thing. Well, really uh, shit thing. It was pretty shit. <laughs> And I think there's no greater example of mankind's deviancy and embracing of that than Rule Trash 34 right. of the internet, which is, if it exists, there is porn of it. Mm -hmm. um, is that a big L liberal or small L liberal culture just, you know, in an Australian context? Uh, it would be a small L in an Australian context. But that's uh, a big L. It would be L. a big L in a French context. <laughs> And a big a, L in, in the context of it being the beginning of a sentence. <laughs> yeah. That's not a sentence, yeah, that's a phrase. You start a sentence with a capital letter. You've got to start a sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Next slide! You get big L for that comment. That was, that was <laughs> so what we're looking at now, we're looking at sort of like a, a change of what we consider taboo. So there are always going to be some things that should be off limits. So... <laughs> <laughs> Genetic legacy. Sorry. So this is the huge problem with incest, despite it being just like the gays, is if that mother and son, delightful as they already were, if they were to have children, they would be raised not only with the stigma of coming from an incestuous relationship, but with a serious chance for genetic abnormality. Tell us more where they're coming from. Uh, they're definitely coming from rural locations, and they tend to be from... A, uh, a low socio-economic demographic until you get to the real high money. So people sort of like in the middle elements of society don't tend to practice incest. <laughs> at the very top and the lower bottom, I'm sick for it. Put on you. Put on you. Get out the piper. <laughs> well, one thing we need to be aware of, when, when we're protecting a, a tab, like when we're thinking of an idea of genetic legacy, that's something we're going to have to consider, is that there are, at some point we're going to get so good with being able to spot abnormalities in children that society's going to have to decide whether or not certain couples have the right to procreate because they carry certain recessive genes. And that's not in the distant future, that's coming. Uh, David Barrow has a very good idea on that, and that makes that CRISPR should be available on Medicare, so that way we don't have ubermensch rich people. Uh, but most likely, people from the West are going to have really healthy babies, and there's going to be a new permanent caste system, because they simply will be genetically better, and they'll be free of... So uh, like the X-Men? More like the Eastern Suburbs. I don't know. If it was more like Gattaca, but hopefully with more full frontal penis. Yes. <laughs> yes. I endorse. And less bad kissing. So, you saying, sorry, Trey, are you saying on this slide that high money is only taboo if you're black, old, or fat? No. <laughs> No, it's it's no no. Having money is never a taboo in sex. Let's go for it. <laughs> so if you have money and you're black, no, the taboo old, was okay. that if you were fucking your own family, or if you were <laughs> likely to have seriously ill children. So, for example, I uh, take that article, which was five of my seven children have cystic fibrosis, and it was the right thing to do. Uh, you really have to ask yourself, was it? And I would answer, no. <laughs> um, so, the next big taboo we need to be aware of is unhealthy power dynamics. So a classic example of that would be someone like uh, Harvey Weinstein or good old Woody. 
Uh, so, even if you aren't related to a person, if you raise them as your own child, you're never going to have a healthy sexual relationship <laughs> because you've raised them. And that is going to be something more important going forward. And that involves a whole range of, like, you know, like, like interwork relationships and stuff like that. We really need to make sure that that, that, that is the taboo. Not you're marrying outside of class, not that you're marrying outside of caste, not that they're the wrong side of the tracks, but that you're in a position of power, and even though you might have asked them for sex, they might not have been in a position to feel they could say no. So focusing on the power dynamics of a sexual relationship leads to a healthy taboo structure, uh, which ties into the third one, which is consent. They're not changing on the screen, by the way. No, I know they're not changing on the screen. I'm talking the words now. We'll get more images next. Example of a liberal future, perhaps. <laughs> you are royalty now. I'm a splice. You don't understand what that means. Dog is all fuck off. I have more in common with the dog than I have with you. <laughs> I love dogs. I've always loved dogs. <laughs> taboo in that he has been bred as a warrior race with uh, canine DNA but he is still a fully sentient being and he's more than capable of acquiescing and despite the fact that she come from a position of power because she was an alleged queen, she wasn't raised that way so she was down to shag in a non-healthy way. Like, that's a witch house for you. That's a witch house No, it's fantasy. Do you think that that's where they're headed next? No, I actually think that Jupiter Ascending was actually very pro- Bestiality. Oh, um, yeah. I have a feeling that we're Travis, name sisters. something you think is anti bestiality. <laughs> uh, War Horse. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, sorry, Sydney Uni just started a module on this. Can you take it over? <laughs> <laughs> now, so what we need to understand is that we're, we are almost at a peak where we're prepared to accept that we have insatiable desires that almost need to be fulfilled. Uh, and we are at the point where virtual stimulation can pretty much satisfy any one of those desires. So violent, grotesque, brutal, criminal acts which perhaps the, the leading science seems to suggest that this could be a good outlet for people, but it would be with a non-interactive simulation so that they could be addressed and then they could have healthy relationships outside of that in a legal framework. <laughs> the problem with this is that right now, our current legislation in every country that speaks English can barely cope with cartoons and barely cope with books. Sorry, Paris, I can't hear you over the piss. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, we could all piss along with it. No, it's shaken out. Oh. Um, so we really need to look at a, a brand new legislative framework. Um, I think that we probably need to go down. Germany is doing some very positive things where they're actually loaning people those awful child sex dolls to pedophiles in the hope that they just rape the doll. Is that Three eugenics? No, they're not killing them. Uh, well, that's a change for Germany. Uh, <laughs> well, that's not a recent change. Uh, that's more of an Eastern Bloc thing these days. Uh, but yeah, so virtual reality is definitely going to be one way to achieve pretty much any taboo you could want in a legally and safe way. Uh, the problem will just be in how we will uh, legislate that. At, at the moment, right now, there's no legislation for it, and it's all really bad. Uh, the problem with that becomes like whether or not you were just playing a club game, or whether or not it's synthetic intelligence. So I have here a classic example of the Wicked Woo mod on Sims 4. Uh, three men enjoying a lady. Uh, and then I have uh, Joaquin Phoenix being disgusting in her, where he falls in love with an artificial intelligence. Now the problem with that is he programmed her. So he is her father. So despite the fact that she is super intelligent, he is Woody Allying, Woody doing a Woody Allen on that machine. And we'll get into that in just a minute. I'm pretty sure I've done a woman on those men. 
say, here we go, this is just another clip of an example of someone that has a taboo that needs to be released, but they're doing it in a non-threatening, safe way. Love Woody Allen. Really supportive of each other. I love her completely and utterly, and she's exactly the same way about me. She actually really enjoys Flow Rose. Now, I think it's pretty open the floor. She probably doesn't enjoy those foot rubs. But while he's rubbing her feet, he's not rubbing anyone else's. So despite the fact that we can ask a whole range of questions about the mental health state of this man and in this follow-up TLC episode, they really did, um, he's not hurting anyone. Now, where that's that getting really interesting is we live in an age where sex dolls are getting more advanced, male yeah. masturbators are getting more advanced, better all the time, and just like in electronics, silicon has a finite shelf life. And I don't just mean the fact that we're running out of it, I mean that we are already looking at people are talking about background meat. Well, shh, don't worry about that. Back talking about background vaginas <laughs> that self clean and is a living flesh item, but it's non connected to external stimuli or a nervous system. So essentially, it will be a programmable flesh pod. Uh, I think that is probably an acceptable oh, wow. way. That time. Because at the end of the day, if you murder that yeah. flesh pod, all you need to do is replace your own above. flesh pod. It wasn't alive in a true <laughs> sense of the word because it didn't have a nervous system. Jesus. I literally just got that. <laughs> so going forward. <laughs> when there was a massive fetishization of marble statues. And it was a very common thing for people to go up to a marble statue and to come on it. And there are some very famous ancient statues which have semen deposits which have ruined down near the bottom of the statue. I saw a the That has died out. That's died out in the age of pornography and it's died out in the age of, of silicon dolls. Speak for yourself. Because people have other access methods. So... Are you Text. suggesting we go up to War Memorials and like... <laughs> <laughs> People don't do it anymore Give me a because they have access to porn. So the hope is, is that if we can give them access to the statues of the future, they won't go to Southeast Asia. I think he's endorsing what are these statues of the future? So going forward, is in a world life? without <laughs> taboo, consent will mean everything. So is it alive? Should you ask it? <laughs> so, it's not rape right if you like it. Still, though, you don't really need to ask it. It's not alive. A flesh pod is not alive. We've covered that. <laughs> An interactive <laughs> simulation <laughs> is programmable, not alive. Are you in a position to ask? So, that would mean whether or not that you are in a more powerful position. Like, you know, do you have that right? What Should you be asking? So that would also follow me to, can it say yes or decline without fear? So that's a huge problem we have now. That's obviously a huge part of the Me Too, Too movement. Uh, there are a lot of people, women that especially, will say that they felt pressured into saying yes. Uh, it's definitely true for financial reasons as well. So we really need to live in a world where not only you are comfortable in asking someone, hey, can you piss on me? But you need to make sure that they're in a position where they feel comfortable to say, no, I don't want to piss on you, or yes, I will piss on you. So really, that comes back to that healthy power dynamic. Oh, well, this is like consent matters. But this is consent. <laughs> consent with Travis oh, Herrera. Right. <laughs> they, oh, no, no one I ever thought they'd say that. <laughs> I never thought I would say the that. The problem is, is what is alive. And we're oh, gonna make us that's where we get to the consent issue with Travis Gray. Who buys the bots? We make programs and the programs write bots. Those bots make tests for other bots, which then those bots improve themselves based on the results of those tests, which then come back to us. And it, it seems quite basic, but so for example, the little Google thing you get sometimes, like which is which one has a traffic line? We don't know how the computer knows which one of those is a traffic line. We don't know how it recognises that fact. That's machine learning. It's a great tool. We use it all the time. It's getting better. We're writing better bots to write better programs to write and test better bots. And they're becoming better at integrating themselves into a, you know, like in a self-replicating progression-based system of digital selection. So 
that is very much similar to the building blocks of life as we understand it. Uh, so in short, uh, you may have seen that there's Sophia, which is like a quite advanced like life like doll. Uh, she will probably be the first thing that someone truly falls in love with or something like that. I actually think there's a lot of uh, machine intelligence has. work going towards like the like the care sector, like so to help care for the disabled and especially the the aged. Except so, Sophia looks so horrified by everything. She does look like, horrifying, and she looks as horrifying no, as no, sex doll. Horrified. She looks yes. disgusted by us. But we don't know <laughs> how her machine learning really works. Clearly, so, she's revolted by this. By the time you ask Sophia for a fuck, she might have been alive for some time. We don't understand the transition point from sapience to sentience in mm. natural life. We don't understand consciousness mm. at all in natural life. All we can do is follow a basic set of guidelines, be adult and agree to it. Synthetic intelligence will be fuckable long before it can acquiesce to it as an adult. Oh my god! Be a VR purpose. Have a vat grown child's vagina. Suck down that programmed <laughs> robo dog cock. But don't fuck Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely you not. You mentioned Darwin's theory of natural selection. If all that's true, why are you alive? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would be what you call junk genetic, genetic code. So if we had been back in the day, I wouldn't have survived past about probably the age of eight. I'm hey, already bored of your answer. Related so, question. If you were a finch, what size beak could you have? Uh, I probably would have a larger beak because I would go for... The nuts? Uh, <laughs> I was thinking probably slugs. <laughs> Wait, Travis, I have a question. Clearly. If we all live in a simulation, why does any of this matter? Well, that's a useless question. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that the only that. life you know is the one within this simulation, and you already must have an innate feeling as to what is good and bad, because you have people that you care and love for. So to turn around and say, why don't I just kill people? Well, why don't you just do that right now? Because there, whether or not that innate quality within you is programmed or whether it's because you're not a sociopath, I can't answer it, and nor can anyone. But uh, you live your life the best you can because as far as you know, it's the only life you have. So even if it is a simulated experience, you're not getting another one. I must believe in free will. So you're forced to do so. Uh, free will is an unknown, we don't know. <laughs> uh, the, the best neuroscientists say probably not. You're probably just a genetic accident and you're a pre programmed part of chance and, and randomness. Yeah, that you is. I don't know. But they, I just think they study the brain so much they become nihilistic and just go, no, we're done. I think they study the brain so much they become <laughs> <laughs>